Today I'm going to demonstrate how to paint a crappie pattern like you see here. And uh, I think you'll be kind of surprised how relatively simple it is to get realistic patterns such as this. Um, I try to paint more realistic patterns now that uh, replicate uh, real forage uh, for our predator fish. So what I did is I started with a lure blank. This one's called a deep CB with a rattle. And I painted a white base coat on it. I always start my baits with, uh, with a white base coat. That's a good starting point. All right, so the next, uh, the next color we're gonna use is an iridescent pearl, pearl white. Paint this one's by Golden. It's a, a fine iridescent pearl. So here we go. take much paint to get the uh, the pearl on there. Now I always heat set my uh, my paint layers with a uh, hairdryer. And the next uh, color I'm going to use is uh, a may green. This is a transparent may green. I like using the transparent paints because it will draw some of the uh, some of the effects from the previous layer, like uh, our pearl white, will kind of blend in pretty well with this transparent green. And that's where we get a lot of uh, our depth and, and texture effects when you paint. <clears throat> now I used a reference photo of a of a crappie, and it looks like just the top half of the body is a very light green. Um, color to it. <clears throat> I don't want to overdo it so I'm going to reduce the air pressure on the airbrush to about 10 psi. And I hope you'll be able to see this on the camera. Just a real light layer of green along the top. If you can see we still get that pearl effect coming through the green transparent green paint. Flip it around and do the other side. Again you don't need a lot of paint. Low pressure. A little paint goes a long way. There you have it. So I'll heat set this with the hair dryer. And uh, then we'll go on to the uh, to the next. What we're going to do now is apply the uh, the black uh, pattern markings, crappie markings on the body. And uh, I mean, it looks more complicated than it really is. Very simple technique. Uh, I poured a tray of some black paint, and I have an artist sponge um, that I dipped in in the paint. Uh, make sure the sponge is a little wet and then I dip it in the paint but I have to dab it quite a bit onto a scrap piece of paper so you don't get globs of paint. You want it fairly on the dry side. And then we start dabbing our random patterns on the, on the bait real lightly. And make sure I get the back. And try to make it look as random as possible. Nothing's exactly perfect in nature. Again, I'm not pressing very hard on the sponge. If you do, you're going to probably get big globs of paint. Maybe a little more on the gill. And I'll heat set that with a hairdryer. 
and then uh, we'll go and add a bit of little black paint around the back and eyes. I'll demonstrate that here in a minute. Okay, now to bring out some of the depth of the, of the patterns we're doing here, I got some um, black paint loaded up in the airbrush, but I have it reduced with this uh, 4010 auto air reducer, and that thins out the paint, again, allowing some of the colors we painted previously to come through. So I don't want the black to really dominate the lure. I want it to enhance some of the effects we've already painted already. So I'm going to start with um, paint in the back, and I did lower the pressure again to about 10 psi. Just lightly go for the back, and I'm going to let it overspray on the sides a little bit. When I do that, the pearlized white and the transparent green will still come through. But it really adds some depth to the lure. You can kind of see how that is turning out here. And again, when I look at my reference photo, uh, Crappie has a very black back, so I'm going to paint a little more black on the back. I'm going to stop for a minute and just heat set this, this layer of paint. Here's coat of paint. Alright, I'm going to darken this up a little bit more with, with the black. Okay. And let's not forget around the eyes a little bit. And under the lip. I'll tell you that black really brings the uh, lure to life. Again, you, uh, the pearlized white kind of gives it that uh, that bright sheen and pearl sheen underneath the, the green. And the key to to make these lures so lifelike is really layering your paints. Uh, I've done lures where I've done a, a base of gold paint with uh, with a transparent orange and. Um, or a sepia color over the gold, or um, transparent greens over a silver base coat. So, um, and all that I developed just by experimenting. Um, so I urge you to do some experimenting too, and you'd be surprised how lifelike and uh, these baits turn out, and how much depth you you get from the paint just by layering paints. Not a lot of coats, not thick coats, but very light transparent coats. So let me uh, heat set this really quick. And really, you're you're done here. And I'm going to put some eyes on, and then we'll clear coat. I want to show you also another uh, little add additive I do for the clear coat. Okay, so I added the eyes, and I love these eyes. I get them uh, on the Tackle Warehouse website. And it's this brand, um, Gary Klein Boss Eyes. It's the most realistic eyes I've been able to come across. And uh, they're not very expensive either, so you can go to Tackle Warehouse's website and pick those up. <coughs> and now for clear coating, I use the DevCon 2 ton clear coat. But to give uh, just some added effect to the bait, I have some glitter, some white glitter, and I add a little bit here to my clear coat and let's mix that up really good I know some people have uh, had problems with bubbles showing up after they mix and uh, those bubbles transferring onto the bait I just had that trouble too I just I mix it up really good for about 30 seconds and then I try to pop some of these bubbles and then when I put on the bait I just do longer strokes and that should break some of the bubbles up too but I don't know if you can see that but see some of the glitter in there and once this is mixed up pretty well it's gonna look like uh, kind of a milky consistency 
All right. Break up some of those bubbles. And we'll start clear coating. Get the eyes pretty good. You don't want the eyes falling out. Some long, even strokes. This clear coat I have, they say is uh, 30 minutes, but I think effectively you have maybe about 10 minutes of working time. I can probably get two to three baits done uh, with one of these mixes. This time I just poured just enough to do one bait. And make sure you get under the lip. What I like about the clear coat, it uh, but it really brings those colors to life too. It doesn't take very long to clear coat. And then when this is done, I'll let it sit here and uh, I like at least six to eight hours. I know there's some people that put these uh, their baits on drying wheels. Um, I've always just put them on my holder here. It's the uh, clear coat is pretty thick and I haven't had a problem with it running yet. Uh, though those drying wheels are a good idea. I just haven't used one yet. And I don't know if you can tell from the camera, but look, you can see the glitter really coming through. and really gives a nice effect. about done. Make sure I got every spot. I hope you can see that all of the glitter. Go over the bait one more time. Make sure the eyes are in there pretty good. No excessive globs of clear coat because they'll harden like that. And that one look good. Okay, and we are done. Very simple and very lifelike pattern. Uh, and this is our crappie pattern. Thanks for watching and subscribe. If you have any questions, let me know.